there's no sweat glands on a pig. They have no other way to keep cool other than us by spraying them with water or by rooting in the mud in the water. It's my favorite thing to do. It's one of my favorite things to do. They get hot, you know, just like Angus cattle, they're black. And so, you know, when it's hot like this, this is, they love it. This is another way you develop friendships with them, you know? Too sweet, they'll wobble back and forth. That's why you scratch them and then they'll just pop over. about uh, 12 sows and about 150 different age pigs. If you got that fat, it, the flavor from the acorns and the hickory nuts and the walnuts all are transferred into the fat and that's what makes it so unique. Pigs are monogastrics and they are what they eat basically. The flavor comes through through the meat, uh, good or bad. This is the book I use. It's from the 40s. This is Morrison's Feeds and Feeding. I mean, you know, this is all what they used to do with pigs outside in an article in Gourmet Quarterly called The Art of Eating. Mm -hmm. And this article was called The Lost Taste of Pork, Finding a Place for the Small Family Farm in Iowa. And that was uh, really, it just a light bulb went off in my head and I said, you know, they said that the corporate hog was too lean, it was tough, it was unforgiving to cook, it had no taste, and fat for chefs is where it's at. This is an Appalachian cured, so yeah, it does taste like a European prosciutto or an Iberian ham, but it's got the tuar of Appalachia, and this is what we're really trying to focus on, and we've got to do it with small-scale farmers. This is why this is really a research and demonstration. We're trying to get this down so that, yeah, this is how you set it up. This is, you take these pigs and we'll, we'll buy them back from you or you can sell them or whatever uh, as a mast fed hog, which is very unique to this area. The consumer becomes a co-producer with the farmer and develops a relationship so they know where the food comes from. 